This week on Riley Roams, we take on our longest snowshoe trail yet and check out a nature megaphone. We're back in another pull-behind camper named Hammy, where we avoid a snowstorm but still get hit with the winter chill that Michigan's famous for. Then we visit a small island called Odin Island to enjoy a nice stroll through a nature preserve surrounded by trees and blankets of snow. Finally, we take a drive up the famed Tunnel of Trees near Harbor Springs and get some incredible views of Lake Michigan, as well as oodles of old ornate oaks. We hope you enjoy today's wintry video. Good morning, we're just outside of Afton, Michigan, getting ready to do a little snowshoeing through the woods here. We are at the Banwell Nature Preserve. It is about a 3.3 mile loop through the woods. I don't think there's very much elevation, maybe like 100 feet or so. Um, we'll see if we, if we go the whole 3.3. I was kind of under the assumption that we could maybe just walk in our boots or put our crampons on for this hike, but but we got, we got the snowshoes on and that seems like a ways in snowshoes. Yeah, and the road is actually behind us here. We're not even in the parking lot. We just got the car pulled over on the side of the road because they don't pave all the roads up here, which is kind of funny to me. They but don't plow a, all the roads. They don't plow all the roads. It could be paved, it could be gravel. We're not really sure we about the- We can't see it. Yeah. We don't know it's not plowed. So we are going to walk up the road to get to the trail and then start the trail. So yeah, we'll see how far we end up going. Riley is on the back in her backpack all bundled up as always ready to stay warm and and have a good time We've been hiking for a ways. Seems like 10, 12 miles. Even. Let's get a live update. Mile and a half, that's all. Um, we just went up a pretty steep hill. So the whole purpose of this little snowshoeing thing was to see the nature megaphone, which I feel like we've been somewhere before that had one. Maybe like Washington State or something. <laughs> oh, we haven't seen this oh. one yet. Maybe. Um, they're usually like a collector, so you can like sit inside of it and like hear nature. So there was a little offshoot that said nature megaphone, but it was like on the bank of a hill and it looks kind of steep. So we just went a little bit further and found a secondary entrance. Um, After so, we did the steep hill one, just for funsies. Well, I wasn't going to tell them that we did that already, but that's okay. So <laughs> now we're going to go up here so Candace can see it. Cause she got a little. I went on the steep hill. You went a little skilled. If I'd fallen, I would have died. No, you wouldn't. She always thinks she's gonna die. What you hear? Oh, I did just hear a bird. Do you hear this? <laughs> Don't hear much, I'm gonna be honest with you, but my voice echoes a bit. Well, I think the snow really dampens the sound in the winter time. This is an ASMR video. It doesn't work backwards. You can only hear me, I cannot hear you. <laughs> Thank you. 
we're back. That got, that got long. We didn't even go everywhere. Like, I think we did, we did 2.8 miles, like 200 feet of elevation. After we left the megaphone, we took Riley out of her backpack, which you've already seen the footage for that, so she could run around. And we decided to take off our snowshoes because she loves to get <laughs> underneath our feet and we didn't want to step on her with a snowshoe. And it was much easier with snowshoes on. Like it got, I don't know, what do you think? Yeah, I didn't think it was that easy with snowshoes on either, but um, yeah, without the snowshoes on, like I felt like every step your foot was also like sliding. So every step was kind of like two steps. And it was basically like walking in very deep sand. Hmm. That's a good way to think about it. It's a good leg workout. Yeah, we had like three more hikes planned today, and I'm not sure what we're doing. One of them we had planned, we're actually not sure we'd be able to do it anyway, though, because you need a, was it like a Michigan, Michigan Recreation pass? Passport or something, and it, from what we looked at quickly, it looked like it was going to be $36 for us to get one for a year, which we need for a day, so I don't think we're going to be doing that. So if that's the case, we're not paying $30 to go on one hike. So. It's also two, and we haven't eaten yet today. We had a breakfast bar around 9.30. We each had a coffee. But... I'm ready. stuffed. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm ready to eat. Beans did pretty good. She's back there grooming herself. Um, she enjoyed the hike when we were on the groom trail. The entrance isn't plowed, so we had to like, park on the side of the road, and the snow is super deep. For like the last 200 300 yards um, luckily when we went we were in snowshoes so we were able to walk in our snowshoes tracks um, but then beans was just kind of hopping from track to track that was that was a lot i'm pretty tired i think uh, i think i'll go home now <laughs> can you name the movie Forrest Gump. um that's what he says at the end of that long like when he walks across the country I'm, I'll go home. I'm pretty tired. I think I'll think I'll go home Why now. So we are back at the Airbnb. We've been staying in for a couple of nights now. We were going to do another hike. We actually potentially maybe drove to the other hike and then... Sat in the parking lot and decided if we really wanted to do it or not. And we were really tired from the, the hike we did prior. It was it was a little more exerting than both of us were, were thinking it was going to be. And Riley was tired, so we just decided to, to come back to the camper that we've been staying in. So we wanted to do a quick little tour. Um, over here is the bedroom set up. I believe in the listing they describe this bed as like a small double bed. I would probably classify it as more of a twin size bed, um, but it is super comfy and they provide lots of extra blankets and stuff because it is very cold here. And over here you've got the kitchen set up. So you've got a stove and an oven which is really nice. Um, another great positive is that they actually have a fridge in here. And they can actually store quite, quite a good number of things. Um, there is no running water, so they do, like in the last place we were staying in, give you some jugs of water for drinking and doing dishes and such. Um, and I really like this little papa plate. I've never seen one of those before, but I think it's pretty cute. It's where, our, it's where you keep all your paper plates, <laughs> which is nice, less dishes. And I'm going to stay over here so I don't have to be an inch from the camera, but over on Andrew's side is a little table set up with two little benches on either side. And you can actually convert that into an extra sleeping space if you like. And we would like. That's where Andrew has been sleeping these last couple of nights. Uh, it's a typical camper scenario. The table drops down, goes between the seat cushions, the backs fold up and everything like that. And that's where you sleep. Um, it's actually really comfortable. I am, I'm 5'11", but I say that I'm six foot and I, I fit perfectly fine. No issues whatsoever. Um, there are a ton of windows in here, which really brightens the place up. And that's it. And there's the door. 
This is a 14 foot 1976 canned ham is what they call it. Ham. Hammy. This is the name of it. I learned the canned ham, I didn't tell you this, is not the brand of the camper. It's the style of the camper <clears throat> where it's rounded on the edges like a can of ham. Like a hickory honey ham for you people who like uh, Christmas with the cranks. Never say hickory honey ham again. And you may be wondering, okay, where's this bathroom? It must be behind canvas. No. Nope. Those are, just, those are just storage closets. The bathroom. is right out there in that little blue pup tent. Inside there is a five gallon bucket with a toilet seat on top and some wood shavings to put down after you do your business. They also have a nice little area right there for you to sit and enjoy, probably more in the warmer months. And then it's kind of hard to see, but back in there is actually a decent sized fire pit area. Uh, they've also provided some camping chairs as well. So you could totally have a fire back there it is a nice rustic woodsy view um, the host home is actually like literally right behind us but um it's, that's been fine not an issue whatsoever yeah it's on like a dead end road so it's pretty yeah pretty quiet pretty private yeah so as you've seen in a prior video we stayed in a camper with a different setup but pretty similar in size this one is actually a 13 foot camper and the last one was 14 feet. I think this one is less it's wide. We are less quite wide. tired from that hike for some reason. <laughs> I mean it wasn't even three miles but it just it whooped our butt. Well it was three miles in the deep snow. Yeah. So that was I, that was a lot. I thought it was already hurting. Um, what was I saying? Oh yes yeah, so it is a little bit smaller and while the setup is cute there's not a lot of space for for moving about like the other one was kind of more open because the bed was like all the way shoved up like this way against the wall so there is kind of a big well big open, relatively open area this one does have a bigger kitchen the other one was literally oh, yeah. like a propane two yeah. burner stove huh? so we have found that it works best that if one of us wants to do something like get dressed or cook or get ready for the day the other person just sits down and waits <laughs> Uh, sometimes I might even go outside and just wait because it's just, it's tight in here, but we knew what it was. We knew that it was going to be small. So but yeah, it's very vintage. Yeah. We're like half an hour, not even from Harbor Springs. Yeah. Um, so it's a really great location. Odin Island about to do the Odin Island Nature Preserve Loop and it's about 1.2 miles should be pretty flat people said it's just a nice stroll through the woods and so far it's really pretty from the parking lot so we'll see if we see anything cool might see some cool looking trees Riley's very excited and she gets to walk this way The Tunnel of Trees is a canopied lakeshore road through residential areas, parks, and rustic towns, famed for vivid fall colors, but we think it's pretty spectacular in the winter as well. The famed M119 highway starts in Petoskey, where visitors can drive the 27-mile route that hugs the shore of eastern Lake Michigan up to Cross Village. The road is narrow and windy with a cruising speed limit of 45 miles per hour, and during the busier months, most folks take it even slower to enjoy the view. Driving the entire road takes a little less than an hour if you want to take your time and soak in the sights of the colorful conifers and delightful deciduous forests around you. After the drive, we headed back to the camper to get some much needed rest before leaving for our next Michigan adventure. So as always, we'll see y'all somewhere. We are at the, well, I 
I thought you were gonna say the name. Oh. I forgot the name. That's okay. Banwell Nutrition. Room trail. The entrance, <clears throat> the entrance isn't plowed. So we're Riley Romes on YouTube. We make YouTube videos showing off. <laughs> I'm trying to think of what to say this one. When we went, we were in snowshoes, so we were able to walk in our snowshoes track. So we were able to walk in our snowshoes tracks. Thanks for watching Riley Romes. Please subscribe to our channel to keep up with all of our travels. Don't forget to hit that like button and leave us a comment below about your favorite part of this video.